and welcome to Miniature Realms. My name's Stuart and welcome to my War of Games Epic Battles Waterloo Stroke Napoleonic um, project vlog number three. Um, it's been a been a couple of weeks now I think since I posted the last one. Um, hopefully everyone who's watching this has had a great Christmas and New Year. Um, I've been quite busy over Christmas and New Year. I don't tend to get extra hobby time during the holiday season. Um, I've got a young family um, and I still work at being self-employed. I still tend to work a little bit as well and uh, trying to balance that with my wife's work and things means that uh, doing all the nice things as well I actually get less um, free time than, than some people do. I know some people get a couple of weeks off work fully and they get some extra hobby time and for me it's kind of the other way around and I can actually start getting a bit more done now we're into January 2022 if you're watching this video many many months or years in the future. Um, but I did do a little bit um, and these are some of the things on the, the table that I've um, um, fully completed. Um, I think at the end of the last video I think there were some shots of the uh, rifleman on the table but I um, was waiting on a, on a, on a new paint um, for the highlight. Um, I was testing out a couple of colours so I've actually come up with a, a scheme for that now. Um, I won't go into that too much detail because there's a painting guide, a painting tutorial coming out soon, hopefully in about a week's time after this video launches. Um, and I did a, a few bits of terrain and I've worked on the first um, base for offices and things as well. So well, let's have a little closer look at those now. So a real quick one to start off with, with, with walking with the family a few few weeks ago or maybe a month or so ago um, I found really nice bits of sort of bark that had been uh, um, chipped off a tree um, picked them up dri dried them out um, and broke them up into pieces kind of from from around this sort of size um, and to, just to use as kind of rocky outcrops on my uh, my table really they work really well with the geek villain mats because they, they're not flat bottomed, but they, they fit very nicely over the edge of, of you know, the hills when you put um, fabric underneath, those kind of things. Um, and I did a really, really super quick paint job on them. In many ways, you don't need to paint them because they um, it was quite a silver looking wood, so they, they, they don't look out of place on the table. Um, but I always find it quite odd when you add something that's completely natural to a manufactured um, look on a, on a battle table so if you're painting things they look slightly cartoon-esque um, and so I think it looks odd when you've got something that's completely natural it's just a personal thing but anyway I primed them black um, and just did a few layers with the airbrush some greys and browns bits of white and a few inks in um, and it looks quite bright on there but as you can see from the few shots that I'm going to pop on the screen now that it seems to blend in quite well on the table and I think it just you can use it in lots of different situations but um, it works quite well for smaller rocky outcrops and the sort of the the, the hilly areas in, in, in the peninsula so those are the first parts the next thing I did was the uh, this bridge. I've had it knocking around for a while. Um, I believe it's a 10 mil scale building. I think it might be battle scale. Um, not 100% sure. I've had it a while. Um, and again, I just thought, well, I've got this sitting around. I had a very, very short um, window of hobby time. I think I'd already um, Zenithal primed it when I was priming some stuff for work. It's been sitting on a shelf and I thought I had about half an hour and I thought I'm going to paint the bridge. Um, and it's just multiple contrast paints really. Some greys, some browns, some yellows, a bit of inks from, from streaks um, and then some um, powders and some tiny bit of mud effects and just some, some tufts and things around the edge. And I wanted to get grey and brown in there so I could use this on a, in a sort of European um, a Waterloo style table I can use it for my Wars of Roses and things as well um, and I can also because of the kind of the dustiness that I've added it looks quite it look, you know it doesn't look out of place on a peninsula style table as well um, again I'll pop some images up on the screen it's um it's, it's properly scaled um, so it looks all right actually with 15 mil as well um, but, but the nature of the the epic base is being 60 mil wide they won't fit on it so to speak so I'd have to plonk them on top or, or or put them sideways or something but in terms of the scale of the table it, look, it looks pretty good so I've fully finished two stands of riflemen and I've half finished another um, there's one strip that's sort of in the middle of me doing a tutorial at the moment that's why there's just two here um, and I've painted these as King's German Legion light troops so they have grey trousers and the green jackets. Um, the tutorial will be a bit of a, a cover all really if you obviously you want 95th you'll just 
painting the trousers green as well. Uh, and, the, and the other changes, if you want the Royal, the Royal American Rifles, if you want the, the 560th, then you're going to be changing the maybe some of the facing colours and things like that. But the, the tutorial will essentially talk you through the green and, and lots of the other processes are very much the same as what, what, what I've done with the, the red coated infantry on those tutorials as well for those of you who are following along. Um, I find that it's um, harder colour to make it really really stand out and pop. Um, you've not got any sort of real eye-catching things going on there so I've pushed the, the, the highlight on the green a little bit further than I originally tried. I'm actually using a army paint, a warm paint green skin um, on, as the highlight and it's a um, contrast Dark Angels Green as the base. Uh, it's the making sure that the, the the white on the bread band bread bag pops a little bit. Just kind of little things like that just help make them not look quite so dull. With the red coats, you've naturally got that gorgeous red that really kind of stands out, and these can end up looking a bit dark and murky. And I really wanted to lift the colour a little bit, so um, I hope I've done that. They're not perfect; they're very much gaming standard. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to get a, get a solution, get a method for doing them. So those have been finished up over Christmas as well. And then since New Year, I finished the first command stand as well. So what we've got here is. The, the standard officer that comes on the infantry sprue and um, the slight conversion. I think I showed him unpainted in, might have been vlog number one, definitely vlog, not vlog number two if not. Um, and it's a head swap from the infantry officer on the normal British infantry sprue. And I've repositioned the arm to go across his body. Um, so that bicorn hat is, has gone on the the officer on, on one of my infantry regiments. So it's just a, a nice way of adding what looks like a second miniature is not exactly the same. I didn't want to just put one for a brigade commander. I didn't want just one model on a square base. I'm using these um, 40 mil round lip bases from Warlord Games. Um, I just like to add a little bit of um, sort of a bit more detail to the base. There's not actually much on this one. I've raised one side slightly. There's a couple of bits of like rocky debris and of some flower tufts as well. Um, same manufacturers, I get my two mil ones. These are two mil flowers. It's um, wall paint figures. Um, and Stuart Faulkner from wall paint figures, very, very kind. I got a little package that just arrived before Christmas saying thank you for all the support. I think I mentioned them on a few videos and things. And, and then it was a couple of packs of, of flowers. So um, really, really, really nice of them to do that. So thank you for sharing those. Again, these are painted pretty much the same standard as the, the regular infantry guys are. I have probably taken a bit more time to make sure that I highlighted everything one level layer above the contrast but at this scale I'm not too fussed when it comes to Wellington and Napoleon etc I may spend a little bit more time on them but um, I just wanted to make them fairly neat and clean and uh, and again make sure the colours are quite vivid and, and, and stand out and, and pop at this scale even if it means they're not um, hyper realistic uh, and I also, did, you know, I found I sort of fan, fell into a little bit of trouble just find, trying to find good reference pictures for for officers and generals that are mounted. Um, a lot of the pictures of mounted generals are old artwork. Um, a lot of the Osprey books and things that I've got access to didn't show sort of brigadiers and um, and brigadier general, you know, generals that kind of major general level. Um, and these are kind of Waterloo era as well. So I think the, the grey trousers might be right. And they do have modelled on them the yellow stripe on the side. And um, I don't know, most of the images I can find were maybe more peninsula based. They were sort of white breeches. So I might be wrong. I'm not too worried with officers. I feel that they could break the rules a little bit, at least for generals. Um, I don't know what the, the standard thing. So I've given them blue facings because this is he's going to be the brigadier um, in charge of the King's German Legion Brigade that I'm working on first. So that seemed to make sense. Um, but again, pop some stuff in the comments, actually. I just realised how much I didn't know about what was the standard approach for, for generals of a brigade. And... Um, if that was a brigade that they had served in and maybe served in one of the regiments, I think maybe they're more likely to have a, a jacket that has those colour facings. But maybe if they'd served in a completely different regiment where they maybe carry the facings over from, from their old regiments. I don't know. You put some answers in the comments. I'd love to love to find out. These are going to be pretty interchangeable anyway, so I'm not going to lose any sleep if it turns out that uh, should have been a completely different colour because I'll be... I've got um, more officer models than I'm going to need, so I'm, I'm quite happy to knock a few, knock a few others up. But anyway, it was. I love doing these little stands. It's nice and nice and fun to do, and um, hopefully it came out looking all right. And hopefully they look, which are essentially 90% the same sculpt. Hopefully they look like different models. 
So I think I rabbited on quite a lot last time about what I was going to collect for the British forces, about the two projects I'm doing at the same time. So I'm focusing on the Battle of Victoria and Lake Peninsula for one side of it. And I'm also going to do 100 days as well. Um, and that I wanted to, you know, hopefully have as many units that can cross over and work both. But if, if they can't be, they can't. Um, and I sort of worked out, first of all, what I needed for Victoria in terms of the British. And I won't go through that again. You can watch vlog number two if you want to see what that was. And I think I said I, I wouldn't bother working out the French yet, that I'd work on the, the British for, for Waterloo next. But, uh, you know, thinking about it, it didn't make sense so much. I wanted to know... Um, what I maybe need to face off against the the, the British, um, and for the area of the battlefield that I'm that I'm I'm doing, um, it meant that the 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 army of Portugal. Um, so General Riel, excuse the pronunciation. Um, so I'll pop that on the on the screen now, and you can you can see that. Um, I, you know I, I haven't worked out a scenario yet, but I wanted to, to kind of look at what part of the French army were in the same area of the battlefield that I'm focusing on. Again, if you want to go back and, and, and find out what that is, please do watch vlog number two, because I talk a little bit about Vittoria and the area of the battlefield that I'm fighting, which is going to be around Gramara, Mayor. And, and, and it looks like the, uh, the the army of Portugal, um, the fourth and sixth divisions is is, is what, I'm, what I'm looking at, at least in terms of infantry. And there's not that much, actually, I think they were defending the town so a little bit less could work well defending the bridge as well so we as you can see there we've got um, the fourth division which has got two brigades and the sixth division which has got two brigades so there's actually eight um, infantry battalions there which will easily be covered by the starter and I have plenty left to expand upon it as well so it's quite a nice decent sized um, but fairly small, I suppose, in some ways, a starter. So I quite like that. It seems quite manageable. Um, and it will mean by working on this Victoria project and then growing into the Waterloo side of it, then I'm actually going to have a, two nice little playable forces so I can get some get some battles and finally get some battle reports on the, on the channel. Um, there are lots of cavalry as part of the Army of Portugal as well. How much will be involved in this part of the battle and the scenario that I, I work out, I don't know. But again, why not? use them as a bit of a focus to start with and as you can see on the screen now the uh, first cavalry division and the second cavalry division of the army of portugal so you've got um four um regiments of chasseurs de cheval one of hussars and um four of dragoons as well so a bit of a mix there which is quite cool so i thought well they're up they will become my paint list for now whether that becomes adjusted or not i don't i don't know but um, in terms of the inventory side of things, it just seems like a really nice, succinct, kind of concise little amount to, to, to start off and collect with. And then I'll uh, work out what to collect afterwards. And the final bit I wanted to cover off today, the final bit of progress, or at least a decision I've made. I talked a little bit about flags and how with the American Civil War epic battles, I, there's no um, finials on the top of the, f the um, flags, uh, flagpoles. So I didn't glue any of the flags on and it meant that the fairly generically painted troops, which they are, especially at that scale, and especially with, with a, a lot of the armies and a lot of the regiments in the American Civil War, it's very, very easy to do that and just switch in between. Um, and then you go and paint a few character regiments up, those with slightly different um, sort of bespoke bits of, of, of uniform, etc., etc. Um, and that I wanted to do that with, with these, but the, the larger ends on the on the finials here which i didn't know the name i think on the video but lots of people went and replied in the comments with them um meant that it was impossible to do that because they were so wide that the flag would just flap around um so i, I did have a few ideas um, one was replacing it completely another one was just trimming off the tops another one was doing what i'm gonna do but um there was a comment um that that basically and it sounds like i'm, I'm just making this up but there was a comment that um 
gave an idea. It's a fantastic idea that I kind of already had an idea to do, um, um, but it was a comment from, from Andrew Fuller. I'm just going to pop it on the screen now, it makes it easier, but um, that comment just cemented that that was probably the right thing to do. Um, so uh, what Andrew's comment says, here's an idea for flags. The decoration at the top of, is called a finial. Thank you. Um, cut the flagpole in such a way that the finial part of the flagpole, if only the top quarter of the flag, glue the flag around the top quarter beneath the finial, leaving the bottom of the flag as an empty tube. This can then slide over the top of the standard bearer. Hope this solves your flag dilemma. So yes, it does. It does. Um, and I said, I, I, I kind of had that idea. Um, and then I can't remember why I dismissed it, but I, 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 I was thinking about it, but I wasn't sure. And then that comment, I just thought, you know, that really is the most elegant solution. The only problem I had um, was that uh, I can remove the flags around but you only get the finials that you need on the miniatures and the plan would be in the future and they, there's some purists out there that might absolutely hate this they might not be watching this video if they, if they are purists anyway um, the, the idea is you've got a set number of facing colors really i know there are lots of different um individual parts of, of regiments but in terms of these miniatures and the way they're presented by warlord games for mass battle the major distinguishing features between the units is going to be the colour of their facings and which is mostly going to be the cuffs on these and maybe the difference between a gold or silver um, shako plates um, and the plume colours. And you'll find that a lot of them are very similar or the same across different regiments so theoretically you could um, have six or seven with green facings and gold trim and pl plates and, and things like that so you may well find that one regiment to another are identical aside from their flag and i've already found with the king's german legion that all the regiments are, are the same they've got the same plumes they've got the same facing so at this scale that i'm painting that the only difference is the flag now looking at the flags as well they're almost identical themselves but we'll, we'll still go with it um, so i need something to give me some extra finials essentially so i could have extra frags prepped that i can say right today this regiment is not going to be the king's german legion it's going to be something else that has a blue facing and swap the flag over which means that for different scenarios they can represent different regiments that's the plan anyway so going from my bits box i found lots of um, spears i think these are gripping beast ones probably not showing up very well on the camera but grip, gripping beast spears from uh, from anglo-saxons i think um, and they are slightly slimmer but close enough at this scale to the the shape and size of the finials here um, i mean the finials here are quite large almost the size of a head anyway so i don't know if that was right or not but i'm happy enough with it so trim the finials off as you can see i've done here, hopefully that's focusing. So I'll trim them off in the same place on the table here. So you've probably got about eight mil, something like that. And then I'll keep those and use those as on some flags. But when I run out, I can also glue on a top of a spear. And all I've done is smooth that off slightly so it's not like a sharp edge on it. Um, and you'll see that just slides down like that on there and these flags so i'm going to do the same with the other one um, and those flags are um the eighth king's german legion which were at waterloo but they weren't in the peninsula campaign so it means i can swap that over i mean the, the, the real difference is i think it just doesn't say peninsula on there but you know that's a little bit of extra detail um that will make my waterloo games feel a little bit more correct than they do over my peninsula games using the same miniatures just by swapping the flag over and the plan is to get as i say get lots more flags for lots of different regiments build them up like this and then i just swap them over stop them over as and when i've got a regiment with the correct facings i probably won't be swapping them over if the facings are incorrect anyway because the, the facings probably give more away than the flags but anyway thank you andrew for cementing that idea it seems like i'm stealing his idea and claiming already thought it. i genuinely already had considered something like that but he his comment just made me think yeah that's absolutely spot on that's what a, a good way of doing it um and if anyone can think of anything better um than these plastic spears 
for making the next ones out of let me know i've only really made this one up as a tester um, but if anyone can think of um, a better resource to make these out of it's got to be easy um, i looked at some pinheads and things like that but they would take too much sculpting i don't really want to sculpt them out of green stuff it's just gonna be too faffy i want something i can just sort of sand and carve out of plastic if possible i did look at some of the metal brass rod spears you can get out there um, they, some of them might be all right, but they're really, really sharp. And I don't know if I want to be putting myself through the pain of that when I feel that that does a pretty good job by itself. Um, and I think I've got about 20 spears or so. So 20 extra flags on top of the, the ones I get on the top of the models anyway. I'm gonna, that's gonna last me for a little while and they're pretty easy to get spears. Um, but anyway, that's that um so not the longest um project vlog update but i did want to show you what i had been up to um i have recently received some post from warlord games i'm actually painting some bolt action tanks up for adepticon's charity auction or one of their charity oh it's a charity raffle i believe sorry um and i had a con conversation with lorenzo from customer services uh, when he was sorting out sending that to me uh, and he very very kindly sent me some extra sprues pre-release so thank you very very much for that um so i have um i've actually got some more british infantry but um more importantly something i haven't had yet is french here um, obviously you may well have been watching or probably should have been watching Ken at Miniature Wargaming Warriors that you had French um, pre-release pre preview stock of um, the French um, and he did some videos for those including some excellent painting tutorials uh, I will be doing my own um, and I will put the next video after this in a couple of days I'm just going to do a quick review of these the reviews are out there just for completion for the own channel um, I think I'll do a quick review of the the light cavalry sprue and I have one French infantry sprue here as well um, and uh, I may well start working on a painting tutorial one of those soon too so thanks very much for watching please do give us a give us a like think about giving us a subscribe look at the other videos on the channel um, and I'll catch you soon